What's up guys? What's going on? So it's a uh, beautiful morning here in Palmasola and I guess something I'll point out first is you know, we started phase one here at Jubilee in February and we're doing phase two now in November and I guess timing could have really been no better. Um, you know, obviously ideal conditions. So wanted to give you all a little bit of a progress update here this morning and what I want you guys to see, y'all see that over there? You guys see this? Hold on, you gotta check this out. You know what time it is? You see what I'm talking about? Still have my hot coffee while traveling, but that's not what I wanted to show you. Behind the hot coffee is Smilax Roots, and uh, the guys are doing a hell of a job. Um, you know, this is no easy task. You can see how much of that root is here, and that root does not, you know, disappear completely during that burning process, so. Um, you know, this is something that I am sticking in the dumpster. I would like to see, you know, be gone, gone, not something that's going to pop back up here in the landscape. And I'll take you around and show you a couple spots where they've been digging this stuff up. I mean, it's, it's no joke. Um, luckily we were talking about it last night. We're done with the Smilax and we're kind of on to more of the fun stuff now. We get to start putting some mulch down. Um, we've started to mulch some of the paths and we're going to start putting some plants on the ground. So hold tight. All right, so we actually had a, um, a spider lift out here all day yesterday, and we actually kind of started to center prune and elevate some of these oak trees. Took a couple of dead oak trees out off of the property. Got a little bit of uh, some heavy pruning done, something I didn't expect to do, something that had popped up that I said I could do. Um, and since we we're here on property, being kind of the final phase, they wanted me to get this done before we get all the landscape in, which is fine. I, I love tree work. Um, I was actually so involved in, in the tree work yesterday, I could not go pick up the camera. It was just one of those things. So I also feel like I don't want to just be walking you all around and showing you just like little steps that are happening every single day. I'd like to show you the things that are kind of more impactful. So, you know, there hasn't been a lot of huge change here since we started. You know, this is, today would be day five. So day five. Tomorrow, day six, yeah, so tomorrow's our, our last day. We're, we're getting out of here. I'm heading back back into uh, Pasco next week to be with the family. So right here over my shoulder, I thought I'd show you all that a lot of this native stuff started to show up. So I'll kind of walk you through and show you the thousands of plants that we're gonna be putting in here on the site. And check this out. So right here we've got 301 gallon mealy grass. Right here we have 300, um, four inch dune sunflower. That is the higher variety. Right here we have 300 Spartina grass. Actually, that, no, this is the cord grass, I'm sorry. On the other side, you see those little plants in the back, those are all Gallardia. There's 100 Gallardia there. There's 300 Fakahatchee grass. There's 70 green saw palmettos. 25 regular firebush. 25 silver saw palmettos. Um, another hundred of the, this is the low dune sunflower, so this one's more of a, a lower species. It doesn't grow as tall as the other one. Then we have a thousand four inch sunshine mimosa. I believe there's some capers in here, Jamaican caper, and oh, a couple Simpson stoppers. So some of the native stuff has started to show up here. It's kind of starting to get a little bit fun. Once we start to see the plants, we get really excited. Uh, today we're taking a delivery of some bamboo, some larger trees, and some palms. And we've kind of started to mulch out some of the paths here, because big problem is that, that this monster mountain of probably, I don't even know, 500 yards of mulch is kind of right in that path of where we're going to be planting one of these big islands here on the site. So I'm going to flip the camera around again. I want to show you guys these beds. Hold on. And as you can see, the guys have done a really good job in the prep work. I mean, all the weeds are out, palms are stripped up, Smilax roots are out. You know, and this is gonna be like a golf cart walk path. We're gonna have a lot of paths throughout the garden. And I'll show you what the Smilax roots look like, cause it's a, it's a bear. I mean, these guys would probably much rather be spreading some mulch right now like they are than um, pulling those roots out of the ground. That was getting old kind of fast. We have a stump grinder coming today. We're gonna to grind those roots out, rip that guy out of the ground. This little area got dug up last night and they really were tending to mound up around the tree and you can see what a mountain of Smilax looks like. It's 
probably a 150 pounds of Smilax root there. Probably, you know, two, three thousand pounds over there in the dumpster. So, Smilax for days, kind of over that. I'm sure they are too. Hey, you guys gonna miss pulling up Smilax roots? Not so much. Not really? So that's what's involved if you want to stop Smilax from coming up in your garden, backyard, food forest. Got to really put the time in. One time deal. Get the roots out and they will stop coming back. Like I said, there's a large island going right up the center here. Just happens to be going right where the mulch pile is. So there was a tree standing there 10 minutes ago. There's a couple of trees that are over in an area where we're actually we're not really, we're not really doing any um, landscaping in that area, but the fact that we had the lift here and that's something that they see every day when they pull in, you know, that that's a focal point. So they're gonna put some uplighting in those trees now that we've kind of made them such a focal point too. It's not something that we have to bring in the focal point. We're bringing out, you know, the, the character of that oak tree that was already existing here on the property. So you guys ready for a little timber? So we're not just an ecological landscaping company. Do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, for y'all looking to get in this type of business, I think tree work is an awesome stacked function on top of getting that ecological landscaping company going. Um, I think that, you know, compared to cutting grass on the side, I would much rather be doing some tree work or, you know, obviously standard landscape also. I think that tree work could probably be the most profitable you know, side gig compared to what we have already going on. So there's not much left to this tree. We'll walk up in here and let y'all see why it came out. Morning, Thomas. Good morning. And as you can see, there's not much left to her. Little totem pole here. No lift today, huh? No fun toys? No lift. I know, I told them we missed it yesterday. So I am, uh, something I wanna point out, I am definitely, not like anti dead tree um you know there's there's some de dead trees in some different parts of this property that we specifically left because they've become petrified once they die um you know those trees actually attract certain species that wouldn't even come here to the property i believe a a dead tree like that it's called like a snag so we have a couple of old pines out here which honestly gives so much character to this space, I mean, I could never imagine taking them out of here. They're so cool looking, and I don't know if y'all are gonna be able to see them. I did get the drone up here the other day. You know, that's one of those pine trees that's pretty much died and petrified, um, and it's not gonna you know, be a hazard of fallen, broken limbs because of the way they petrify like that. Compared to the oak, you know, that oak tree, when it dies, it just basically falls apart. You know, pieces start to rot off, they'll fall, they'll break, they hit the ground, so you know that's something that we get out of here because it can be a hazard, and it's not you know a centerpiece like that snag that we have over there. Okay, so this stump is a double header. Might not come out as easy as the last one. I didn't record the last one, but I want to show you all how we lift out you know a large. This isn't a normal stump grinding. This is a tree that had blown over, you know, and that root ball, that stump was really uprooted. So. I'm gonna hit it a couple times with the gill. Hopefully it comes out. He's been going at this for about seven minutes now. Hopefully 15 minutes. See you later. Let's see. All right, literally favorite part of my job is ripping stuff out of the ground. Um, this is why I come to work. I love getting crazy with it here. Uh, we're about, I'd say halfway through this hog of a stump. And let me show you the front of this thing. I mean. This isn't just one pine tree. Woo! Good thing you got a tool here. Check it out, this, dude, this thing's a double header. So there's like a 12 inch, and there's like a 24 inch in there. It's not gonna be easy. Got about halfway through it though. I don't know how much of that y'all caught. I think I had a bad angle on the camera. If I didn't have that yellow gill back there, this would not be coming out of the ground. So, tools for the job capital investment. Alrighty, 
I hope y'all got the takeaway there. It's out. Definitely took a little longer than expected. I filled the 30 minute section of the card there, but uh, I think the, uh, the good point and takeaway about the uprooting of that stump was uh, persistence will get you anything. You know, there's a, if there's a will, there's a way. And if you have the commitment, and if you're willing to keep giving it and giving it, it's gonna come out no matter what. So that double-headed stump thought it was gonna beat us, we kicked its butt. One hour later, that thing's out from the roots. We're gonna grind the rest of that tap root out. And that's all she wrote. Oh, hey, what's your name? How's it going? My Go. name's Quentin Panko. Quentin, what do you do here? farm manager at a Jubilee Organics. Lucky you, how'd you score that job? <laughs> uh, lots of studying and lots of practice and lots of hard work. What school did you go to? Florida Gulf Coast University. Woo, they got a food forest there, don't they? Yep, I did a couple years of work in there, a lot of volunteer work and uh, gained a lot of experience that helped me get a job out here. Nice, so you kind of have the dream job, huh? Yeah, it is a dream job. Yeah? Dream team job. Dream team <laughs> job. So, what's your favorite part of working here, Q? Uh, harvesting food and growing soil and propagating stuff, all the good stuff, basically. Nice. How's the, uh, how's the harvest been on the sweet potatoes this year? Um, I think next year we're going to increase our yield by quite a bit just by harvesting at the right time, but... You know that farm life, you're always 10 steps behind where yeah. you want to be. So yeah. We could have harvested these a little earlier and probably gotten a bigger yield. So tell us a little bit about your daily tasks around Jubilee. I mean, what do you do around here every day? Um, well, I spend a lot of time harvesting and uh, maintaining the fruit groves, pruning fruit trees, uh, checking for pests and diseases, making sure that the irrigation is running properly and we're not being threatened by anything like uh, the African tree weevils or an aphid infestation. So you get paid to do all this cool stuff? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I pretty much retired the day I got this job. <laughs> I don't really think of it as work because it's I'm just out here playing all the time basically. Playing in the dirt, yeah. In the garden. And you got all these cool tools to work with. I mean, tractor, yeah, gator. Tractor is so cool. So, I mean, for people sitting at home, Q, they're like, man, how do I get a job like this guy's got? Like, he, what do I do? Yeah, uh, you gotta read a bunch of books, a bunch of gardening books, and... Um, you got a top two or three here? Eric Tonesmeyer books, basically. Yeah. Uh, get really in-depth with those, and... Um, I forgot the other authors, but there's a bunch of agroforestry, permaculture type books out there that are really, really good. Uh, my favorite one is Carrots Love Tomatoes, or Tomatoes Love Carrots. I've seen way. that one, yeah. It's like and, a companion uh, plant book. Yeah, it's really helped me with the com companion planting aspect of annual gardening, which um, I had a minimal experience with coming into this project. I'd say that was probably the most intimidating thing too, right? Yeah, that's probably what I learned the most about was... The market garden? Growing a market garden, yeah. And how large is the market garden that you maintain here? I thought it was about a quarter about acre. About a quarter acre at least, yeah. But I um, yeah, I mean, we, have, we haven't even hit our maximum productivity in that market garden and we've gotten hundreds of pounds. I mean, this, yard, this farm's only 10 months old. You're getting food out of it already? Yeah, tons of food. Wow. Uh, unimaginable amounts of food. We just harvested uh, 500 pounds of yucca somewhere around there. Wow. So. so I know we lost one or two palm trees, but I mean, we planted, you helped plant this, Q. I mean, yep. like 10,000 plants here. I mean, uh, have you had a lot of plant loss? Is there anything? Uh, I know we've learned some species uh, don't I mean, like wet feed. I mean, yeah. a lot of fruit trees die or For anything? For the most part, we only lost, uh, we only lost two fruit trees. Two fruit trees. Out of the whole grove. Um, all the bananas are good. Um, 
Mangoes are good. Mangoes are fine. We lost one mango and we lost one lychee. Okay, we lost a lychee. And it was probably from some sort of fungal disease. Uh, so we're gonna harvest all these sweet potatoes and cure them in the barn. Cool. And then store them in uh, fish boxes and burlap sacks. And then they're gonna be eaten by the family, uh, Ryan Duncan and his family. and. Maybe some of them get sold to Ed Childs and the restaurant group. Nice. Uh, and probably some of them will go to employees who work on the farm. Score. Yeah. You guys get to eat out of this thing too? Oh uh, yeah, I eat out of here all the time. It's pretty Whoa. awesome. Whoa. Very cool, Q. Well listen man, you're, you're kicking butt out here. Thanks. I want you to keep up the hard work. You expect to get this whole mat up today? Uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. yeah I don't know. I got a lot of other things I need to get to. Some healthy looking sweet potatoes. Yeah. I'll be putting some seeds in the market garden later. Nice. So. And we'll have to come over there and check it out? Yeah. Are we invited to the market garden? Yeah, man. I'll be throwing some kales in there and stuff. Maybe some carrots. All right. Cool. Yep. Cool. Q, thanks for your time. I'm going to catch you here in the market garden shortly, buddy. All right. Cool. All right. See you later. Tell Q. Thank you for his good work. He's obviously kicking butt out here at Jubilee. And uh, Q knows how we end our videos, so I'm gonna let him end this video. If y'all remember, like, subscribe, share, and then Q. You gotta knock that thing out. There we go. He did a good job. <laughs> oh!